Whenever I talk about flags, it's usually about specific flags of a country and how they evolved, about how they changed, or even about proposed flags that were never used. But in this video, I want to do something slightly different and handpick a few flags throughout the world and throughout history that I think are amongst the most interesting cool and sometimes odd looking flags I've ever seen because it's interesting to see the creative ways which people have found to represent themselves and their regions. So using this topic, I'm hosting a second edition of the flag design contest, but we already did basic country redesigns last time. So here's the idea for this one. Pick two countries, they don't need to be adjacent and create a new flag for their hypothetical union in a way you think looks good and represents both nations. You can send them to gkflagcontest at gmail.com until December 1st. I will then pre-select them and post a link on December 4th's video for all of you to vote on the top five winners, which will each get a general knowledge merchandise mug as a prize and be shown on a video showcasing the best entries. Now let's get started with this video. First we have the flag of Zeleznogorsk. This is one of the ones on the thumbnail. A red field with a golden or yellow bear attempting to split an atom. Zeleznogorsk is located in southern Russia, somewhat near Mongolia, formerly known as Krasnoyarsk 26. It was a secret town in the Soviet Union that didn't even show up on maps. In 1992, President Boris Yeltsin announced secret towns could go back to their historical names, but even today it remains a closed town, meaning you can't go in or out without special permission to do so. It was established in 1950 for the production of weapons-grade plutonium, presumably to make nuclear bombs. It is said that adjacent to the city there are granite mountains, and inside those mountains the Soviets built caves to house the nuclear facilities. But this atom-splitting bear isn't the only cool Russian flag. In fact, Russia still has a lot of industrial towns or cities, and they tend to have cool and or simplistic flag designs. Other examples of this are Shuya, representing a bar of soap, which used to be the city's main industry. Magnitogorsk used to be a mining town, and its flag represents the mountain where they mine the ores. Leninsk Kuznetsky was a coal mining town, and it depicts coal on its flag. Liniov housed workers of an electrode factory and Severny was a radio center. It's interesting to see how these places were able to depict, usually in a graphically pleasing way, their main activity and what represents that location. There are some awful exceptions though, like the flag of Partizansk, representing a ginseng plant found in the region, but in a way that a surreal memes page on Twitter would. But let's get back to the good ones. Africa also has a few odd flags. Some are cool and some are just outright weird. One that I really like is the flag of Zaire. Zaire no longer exists, it is now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo with a different flag than what they had at this time, but this early flag, used from 1971 to 1997, was really cool. A green field with a golden circle in its center, and inside it is a hand holding a lit torch. It is said it was created as a part of Mobutu, a president's attempted re-Africanization of the nation, whatever that means. Another cool African flag is Mozambique's, but this one is still in use. A horizontal tricolor of green, black, and yellow with white stripes between each color. On the left is a red triangle and golden star, and on top of it is an open book, a farming tool, and most unique of all, an AK-47 weapon with a bayonet attached to it. It's completely surreal how a real country depicts a weapon like this on its flag. I actually really like the flag though, especially the unique tone of green they use. Mozambique is one of only four nations worldwide that use weapons on their flags. The other three are Guatemala, which uses two rifles and two swords, Haiti, which uses spears, and Bolivia, which also uses rifles and spears. The thing with Mozambique is that it uses a modern weapon because its origin as a nation was somewhat recent. Maybe that's why we feel it is more shocking than the others. The flag of Iswatini also has a weapon though, and I find it really cool, containing two spears, what seems to be a staff, 
and a Nuni shield, traditionally used by the native population. Africa is also a gold mine for bad flags as well. And if you're into the topic in general, you know where I'm going with this. That's right. Liberia. Liberia's national flag is great, being inspired from the US's flag, but their local ones, that's another story. Liberia's county flags look like they were made on paint, and according to Wikipedia, these are the official flags. We can even see it on these stamps. I mean, these ones with the trees, it's unbelievable. If you want me to make a full video dedicated to the worst flags in the world, let me know in the comments because these will for sure make it in there. But let's get back to the good ones. And in Europe, there are also some really awesome flags. The most surreal for me is Sicily's local flag. The colors are fine, but the figure in the center is absolutely terrifying for me and looks like one of those monsters from that video game, The Forest. It does have a lot of historical value though. The figure is the head of the Medusa, a figure of Greek mythology, and this plus the Triskelis, the symbol of the three legs, are associated with Sicily from very early on. They are found in antiquity, depicted on coins, minted in Syracuse in the 4th century BC. Another cool European flag is that of the Isle of Man, part of the United Kingdom, which also depicts a triskeles, the three legs, although without the terrifying Medusa head. And there is apparently a somewhat direct connection between the two. It isn't a coincidence that they just happen to choose the same symbol. It has to do with royal families in medieval times. It seems that at a certain point, the Pope granted the kingship of Sicily to an English noble. These connections between royal families led to the usage of the symbol on the British island so far away from the Italian one. In Italy itself, and also connected to Sicily, there is another interesting flag, the flag of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. It was located in southern Italy from 1816 to 1860, created when Sicily merged with Naples. Their flag is not aesthetically pleasing at all, at least in my opinion, and in modern times it would be absolutely unacceptable as a flag due to how complicated and detailed it is, because the flag is essentially a white field with the kingdom's coat of arms, and it's because of the coat of arms that I think the flag is interesting. So many European royal families are represented, I assume because the two Sicilies rulers had marriages or family ties to each of these. Portugal, Bourbon, Austria, Aragon, Burgundy, Lyon, Castile, Flanders, Jerusalem, amongst others. And on the bottom, each of these medals represents a specific military or religious order. I also absolutely love the Oriflamme that France used to use as its kind of first flag. It was the battle standard of the King of France in the Middle Ages, originally the sacred banner of the Abbey of Saint-Denis, a monastery near Paris. When the Oriflamme was raised in battle by the French, no prisoners were to be taken. This was used to strike fear into their enemies, and I think in terms of how it looks, it's also really cool. The flag of Cyprus is also unique because I think it's one of the few in the world, if not the only one, along with Kosovo's, which depicts the country's or region's map in the flag itself. And then we have some local European flags of which I'd point out the following really cool ones. The mermaid banner of Payan Tavastia in Finland, the flag of North Karelia, the flag of Corsica in France, the flag of Leinster, which I think is one of the very few, if not the only flag in the world with a musical instrument on it. The flag of Venice, first the independent republic, and now the Italian region. It's absolutely fantastic. Not only is the artistic border impressive, but despite looking rectangular, it's actually a square flag with seven additional tails, each bearing the coat of arms of one of Venice's provinces. And here we can go back to Russia for some of its local flags. The flag of the Mariel Republic, this amazing armed bear. I mean, what's more awesome than a bear with a sword and a shield? Plus, the colors are cool as well. The Yaroslav Oblast also has an armed bear flag. I guess that's a tendency in Russia. The flag of Moscow is also great, depicting Saint George slaying a dragon. Or the flag of Pskov, which depicts a snow leopard, a cloud above it, and a hand reaching down. Perm's flag is red with a white bear, 
carrying what I assume is an orthodox bible. And another great Russian flag is that of Kalmykia. It reminds us of the flags of Japanese prefectures because it's so simple. The Republic is home to the Kalmyks, a people of Mongol origin and primarily of Buddhist faith, making Kalmykia the only region in Europe where Buddhism is the most practiced religion and a flag might be related to that. The white flower is a lotus, usually seen as an Asian symbol, and the color is said to represent the sun and religious faith of the nation. Or the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast in Ukraine, which represents the region through a soldier holding his rifle and a really cool combination of shapes and colors. And also Kyiv, which flies an azure field with a yellow border and Archangel Michael in the center, armed with a sword and a shield. Finally, moving to Asia, some of their coolest flags throughout history, at least in my opinion, are these. First, Bhutan, for one simple reason, dragon, which comes from Bhutanese mythology. They use a dragon as their representation because in Zonka, Bhutan's native language, the name of the country is Druk Yul, meaning dragon kingdom. Plus, the colors are really cool too. Qing China is another example of an awesome usage of a dragon, a mythical creature which seems to be very much used in Asian, medieval, or ancient banners. Although we also have some examples elsewhere in the world, like that type of dragon we saw in the Moscow flag. Qing's flag was the first national flag of China, yellow being the color of the royal dynasties of Chinese emperors. A flaming pearl is also shown on top of the dragon's head, symbolizing wealth, good luck, and prosperity. Nepal also must have an honorable mention. It's not one of my favorites in terms of aesthetic, but it's odd in the fact that it's the only non quadrilateral flag in the world, its edges representing the Himalayan mountains in which the country is located. Burma had this great flag of the Third Burmese Empire under the Kornbaung dynasty, depicting a colorful peacock, and I absolutely love this flag. I think it's so much better than the one the country currently uses. And finally, we have Formosa's flag, which was used only for a few months in 1895 before the Japanese took over. It's awesome because it depicts a flying tiger with fire coming from its tail. In the National Taiwan Museum, we can see a framed flag from the time. So those are, in my opinion, some of the coolest or most odd looking flags in the world. And maybe you can design some more odd ones in this new flag contest. Remember, just pick two countries and design a hypothetical union flag that would represent both of them through their colors, coats of arms, or just symbols that represent their people and cultures. If you have any other suggestions or know of other strange flags, good or bad, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.